Hey internet, you might remember that over the summer after I got back from VidCon, I said that I got to do an interview with Michael Aranda and talk to him a little bit about his community. I still did that and I've had this footage on my computer for quite a long time and I decided that today I would go ahead and share that with you. Before I roll the interview, I guess I just wanted to give a little bit of background. For most of you, you guys know that I am involved in the community that surrounds the What I'm Doing Right Now vlogs that are created by Michael Aranda and his production studio, Cinema Studios. I started watching these videos a little bit more than a year ago and a little bit less than a year ago, I started to get really involved in the community. And in my opinion, it's one of the best communities here on YouTube. Everyone is really kind and welcoming. It's a community unlike many of the ones you will see in that when you go to the videos, you see hardly any negative comments and everyone just wants to interact with each other. So I decided that I wanted to get the chance to talk to Michael and see what his insight was, why he thinks that the community is the way that it is and how it all started. So without further ado, Here's what Michael has to say about his community. Hi guys. So I'm here with Michael Aranda. How did you start noticing that your audience was getting engaged? And do you think that there was something that caused that shift? I was posting videos on my main channel and uh, I just started noticing that sometimes the same username would show up in the comments every once in a while. I don't know if I remember the exact username anymore. There was someone that was like soccer girl 82 or something like that. I've always kind of considered Twitter to be more of where I interact with mm -hmm. people than YouTube comments. People who would follow me on Twitter, we would start having back and forth conversations. It wasn't really until I started doing the daily vlog thing where there was a community that it could subsist by itself almost. Yeah. Um, posting the stuff on, on my main channel it would attract people who were like, oh, this is a cool video, I like the song, or nice cinematography, or whatever. But the daily vlogs started bringing in the like running inside jokes that everybody <laughs> latches onto. Um, and because there's a video almost every day, there's the ability to communicate with other people in the comments on a regular basis. Um, you know, on, on the daily vlogs now, Steve is always there thanking whoever, uh, helped bring that episode to fruition. Someone will comment on something in the video and someone else is right there to, to jump in and, and give their two cents on it. I don't remember that kind of thing happening before the daily vlog existed. There are a lot of people who came to know who I am because of my association with Charlie McDonnell. So when I flew out to do the Chameleon Circuit <laughs> album with them, people, a lot of people were seeing me for the first time and at that point I sort of had a, a purposefully vague internet presence like mm -hmm. it was I don't know if it was just me b being afraid to let people in to like get to know me or yeah. whatever but I I did maintain this kind of like mysterious person I think that was probably a barrier to mm -hmm. the kind of social community interaction that we see now whereas I'm I'm much more comfortable just saying whatever to the camera and showing whatever on camera what do you think has contributed to the very high engagement of the community, but also the overwhelming positivity of it. That is kind of a big question mark for me, to be honest. To a certain extent, I believe that a content creator who is loud and rambunctious, I feel is likely to attract people who are loud and rambunctious. Right. So because my personality tends to be a little bit more understated and mellow, I think that that just kind of attracts that kind of person. I was on a panel yesterday where one of the questions that came up to the panelists was, how do you deal with hate comments? And I just didn't say anything to that answer because I was like, I mean, like, maybe once every six months, some random person will show up and say something mean. And, you know, there's a good chance I'll just take what they said and put it on a shirt and sell it. If someone is, is watching this not understanding what that means. Someone wrote me a very long email critiquing my life decisions and I took one of the lines out of that email and put it on a shirt because it was funny and it I, probably is my most best-selling right? shirt product to date. I wonder if this person, whoever wrote that, knows. I do feel bad a little bit, but only a little <laughs> I bit. I not feel bad at all. Do you feel like it's necessary for a creator to interact with their community? Do you think it's a responsibility that you have? No, I don't feel like that should be anybody's responsibility. Um, there's a 
a YouTuber who's very popular in the gaming community who goes by the name Total Biscuit. He was the recipient of some not very nice attacks or whatever, so he kept distancing himself. And I think at this point he's just sort of entirely sworn off social media. So he doesn't interact at all whatsoever with the people who consume his content. But On all platforms? I believe that's the case. Okay. I can't say with 100% certainty, but I, yeah. I, I think the thing was... He's also dealing with... Um, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Um, so, like, the doctors are like, you only have two, three, whatever years to live. Um, and he was like, I, I want to spend that time not stressing out about hate comments or whatever. I want to spend right. that time with my family. So he's, he's making these videos still, but he's kind of just focusing his social energy on on his friends and family in his real life mm -hmm. um, but all that said there is still a very avid community of people who watch his content and I think you couldn't look at that group of people who watch his videos and follow him on Twitter and are a part of his subreddit and watch them interact with each other and say that's not a community. You right. couldn't do that. So the final thing, there was a question of what you would like to see from us. Is there any like sort of dream thing that you would like the community to be a part of or do? Oh boy. I mean, if we're <laughs> talking about like ultimate dream, then everyone no. would just go out and convince everybody else to watch my videos. Right, okay. So go watch his videos. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the problem there is that the videos that I spend the most amount of time working on are the daily vlogs. Yeah. And daily vlogs have what I call a very high barrier to entry. On SciShow, a show on which I'm a host, you don't have to care who I am. Mm -hmm. You can just show up because you're interested in the mating habits of mollusks or whatever the topic of that video is, and you can leave that video feeling like you got something, mm -hmm. the information that I'm talking about. Again not having to care whatsoever about who I am. With a daily vlog, you have to care a lot. And it's not only like, it's not really the kind of thing where you can dip in and peace out for a little bit and then come back later. You will have missed a lot of things that have happened and new inside jokes come up. So there's a high barrier to entry and kind of a high level of energy commitment to continuously be a part of mm -hmm. a daily vlog community. That's a lot to ask of people. Yeah. And so I spend time stressing out about, like, should I be pouring this much energy into something that is hard for people to get in and stay in? Mm -hmm. Or should I be focusing more on the kind of stuff I did on my, on my main channel when that was more the focus? That It has a little bit more wide audience appeal. Mm -hmm. It's more about just the art of it and the, the music involved. And of course, all of that stuff sort of bleeds over into the way that I do my daily vlogs. Right. But with the, the main channel stuff, the focus is less on, on me and more on the things I'm making. So, the pun. To answer your question, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just did an interview with YouTube in there and they were asking um, like what cool things I've seen my community do without my involvement and one of the more interesting things that I've seen is I have this Minecraft server mm -hmm. and so people who watch my videos can get on this Minecraft server and I sort of recently a few months ago found out that two people who met on that server are dating and that just blows my mind that yeah. because of life choices that I made, there's a romantic relationship that exists somewhere in the world that's weird. Yeah. It's cool and crazy. I have these pipe dreams or, or fantasies about leveraging community to do things similar to what we see Hank and John do, like bringing uh, a sort of community service aspect to, mm -hmm. to the community. I really believe in the idea of leaving the planet a better place than, than the way that I found it. And I've been, uh, let's, say, let's use the word blessed, to, uh, to have a voice that people like to listen to and to have ideas that people like to listen to. So if I can use that to help motivate people to do good in, in their local communities, then that would be awesome. I don't, I don't know exactly how to get there from where I am right now, but 
it kind of feels like maybe we're on the way. Yeah. Yesterday at my panel, someone asked about my getting stuck in Paris thing. And <laughs> so like without this community that's grown around the content that I've made, I would have had a harder time in Paris because it was a community member who offered up their their home for me to stay in while I was stuck in Paris. Yeah, that's just mind-blowing. We can end this here. If you would be interested, would you like to give some sort of thing that you would like to say to the community? Make good choices. Always great advice. All right, well, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank I you. really appreciate it. No awesome. problem. Thanks. See ya. So there we go. There's the interview. I am sorry that it took me so long to share it with you. If you are interested in seeing more of what Michael does, you can go to youtube.com slash what I'm doing right now. I will leave the link in cards and descriptions and all of the places. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Community and kind of his input. <laughs> we are attracting stares. You'd think this would be a thing that you'd be used to seeing. <laughs>